Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Let's talk boxing. You know, in my opinion, boxing is rock, paper, scissors. Different styles beat different styles and lose to other styles, right? There's no one dominant style that beats everything else. Every fighter has a weakness. Every fighter can be beaten. We've had champions who have looked invincible. Mike Tyson, Felix Trinidad, and this is just in the last three decades. Roy Jones, Paul Williams, Manny Pacquiao, Saul Alvarez, right? All of them have met their Waterloo. We've had prospects on the way up who have looked unbeatable. Vladimir Klitschko, before Ross Purity. David Hay, before Carl Thompson. Adonis Stevenson, before Darnell Boone. All three of those guys, excellent fighters, all three of those guys got stopped. Now one of the things I've learned as I've gotten older is that that phrase, it's different this time, is wrong, right? You see cycles repeat themselves. Fighters rise up through the ranks, they get attention, they get crowds. Suddenly people forget that they're mortal. There are very few fighters in the sport who have had runs of 10 years, etc. Right? The reason why so few have had long dominant runs is because it's very hard to be dominant for that long. Right? So, with that in mind, let's talk about Gennady Golovkin. I made an earlier video. I was a little bit surprised at the blowback. I encourage everyone to look at not the video, but the comments to the video post fight. Janady Golovkin against Curtis Stevens, right? You're going to see that people are completely convinced that Janady Golovkin is not just the present of boxing, he's the future of boxing, right? The feeling is, quite frankly, that he does it all, right? Knocked out Matthew Macklin on a body shot, has uh, knocked out Lucien Butte and the amateurs when both were wearing headgear, hits like a truck. If you go online, you're going to read about uh, Saul Alvarez visiting Janady Golovkin's camp, the two guys sparring, and Golovkin getting the upper hand in the sparring, right? The feeling is that this guy has what it takes, even against great champions like Sergio Martinez, and I keep trying to tell people Martinez is on the verge, in my opinion, of becoming one of the greatest middleweight champions in history. Folks, he's already beaten Darren Barker, who has one of the belts. Right? You heard me mention Paul Williams earlier. Sergio Martinez beat Paul Williams. Right? Martinez has had quite the run. But yet, of course, the Janady Golovkin people don't view Martinez as a can our guy beat him fight. They view that fight as in which round does our guy stop him. They can't envision a scenario in which Janady Golovkin loses a fight. Let me give you two actual opponents, right? Let's say the fight starts. Across the ring from Golovkin, is Bernard Hopkins, right? Let's say that the fight's at 168. They work out the weight. People need to realize that Hopkins has fought at catch weights before, right? Let's say Hopkins comes out and Hopkins spends, and keep in mind, Hopkins, one of the secrets to him is he's mobile, right? Hopkins moves around the ring. I don't care how old he is. Don't look at the uh, 
calendar, look at his feet. Moves around the ring. Hopkins spends the first round and a half just moving around the ring. Reading Golovkin's movement. Figuring out exactly what tells there are. What he can use to predict. When Golovkin is going to throw a jab. Right? Figuring out not just Golovkin's feints, but what he's trying to set up behind the feints. Right? So let's say Hopkins is Hopkins. He comes out and he's not doing much. He's not throwing a lot of punches. He's just moving around the ring looking at Golovkin. Now you know Golovkin is accustomed to being on his front foot. You know Golovkin is high volume. Right? Look at the CompuBox numbers. Right? Golovkin's not a guy who spends a lot of time between punches. So you know Golovkin's going to try to force the issue. He's going to walk forward. He's going to try to hunt down Bernard Hopkins because that's who Janady Golovkin is. <coughs> right? He's going to try to cut off the ring on Hopkins. But what if all Hopkins is doing is moving and reading Golovkin? Because Hopkins isn't high volume. Hopkins is, in fact, high strategy. So let's say the fight doesn't really start until the third round. And let's say by then, Hopkins knows how to dodge Golovkin's jab. Right? By then, Hopkins has figured out his entry point on when he needs to step forward to tie up Golovkin. Let's say Hopkins starts to get a shoulder between Golovkin's hands. Starts to hide his head behind his shoulder. Let's say Hopkins is able to take all the leverage away from Golovkin by being up on Golovkin. Let's say Hopkins lands to Chris Punches, Curtis Stevens landed, but then ties up Golovkin. Let's say Hopkins is so close to Golovkin that the fact that Golovkin knows how to cut off the ring is irrelevant because there's nothing to cut off. Hopkins is already right in front of him and Hopkins is comfortable. Let's say as Golovkin then starts to get frustrated inside, starts to fall apart inside because this old man is throwing punches and then grabbing him, throwing punches and then grabbing him has his head down, right, rolling with punches, has a guard where Golovkin can't hit him to the body with his left hand, actually is pushing Golovkin back, turning a boxing match into a wrestling match. Let's say Golovkin isn't great at clinching because he hasn't had to do it. So, of course, while Hopkins, when he clinches, is tying up Golovkin's hands, when Golovkin retaliates by trying to clinch Hopkins back, Hopkins has a hand free. Hopkins is using that hand. Right? As I said in an earlier video, Hopkins has been in the ring with bigger, aggressive guys. Physically bigger men than Janady Golovkin. Right? Who hit at least as hard as Golovkin. Jean Pascal. It's hard for a light heavy. That's 175. Glovkin's at 160. Tavares Cloud. Again, 175. These guys are elite fighters. These guys have had belts at 175. What's Golovkin going to bring to the party that's different this time? Right? Suddenly, it's like you start looking at the scorecards. Hopkins is doing what he wants to do. Then he starts playing a distance game. Right? He starts backing up. Golovkin has to read his face. Because Golovkin doesn't want Hopkins jumping back in, hitting him, then tying him up. Golovkin knows that's a losing proposition. Suddenly it's a low volume fight. Golovkin's out of his comfort zone. He doesn't know whether he's winning or losing the fight because this is not the way his fights typically go. It's starting to unravel. His corner starts to tell him, look, 
you need to do something here. You know, you need to look good in these championship rounds. Yes, we're in the championship rounds now. Then, of course, Hopkins has stamina. He starts to close the show. He's bending his head. Golovkin doesn't know if he's getting hit with punches or with Hopkins' head. Worse yet, Hopkins is a master at putting his head in places where an over-aggressive fighter runs into it. Right? So then, Golovkin might be conscious of the head. Might be conscious of lunging in the way he normally lunges in. Right? Suddenly, you have a fight that's a problem. Let me give you another scenario. <coughs> Let's say Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. actually hits the gym. Let's say he's more dedicated at 168 than he was at 160. Let's say Golovkin comes across the ring at him and suddenly realizes he's in with a physically strong, physically big man. Let's say that this is prime Chavez Jr. So he's not wasting rounds like he did against Brian Vera. Let's say he actually steps forward. Anjanady Golovkin. Let's say that he gets right up on Golovkin as he did Sebastian Zvik. He's right up on Golovkin. He has his head tucked on Golovkin's shoulder and he's going to work. He's meeting volume with fire. Right? Golovkin's throwing. Chavez Jr.'s throwing. Chavez Jr. is throwing withering body shots. <coughs> Golovkin tries to move him off because Golovkin needs a little space to operate. Chavez is going nowhere. Chavez sets up shop. Chavez pins Golovkin on the ropes, as he did Sebastian Vick. Chavez is throwing the kind of power shots that quite frankly stunned not just Andy Lee, but Andy Lee's cornerman, Emmanuel Stewart. Right? Let's say the big surprise in a Golovkin Chavez fight is that Chavez hits as hard as Golovkin. You don't believe me? What hit Sergio Martinez in the 12th round of that fight? Right? My point is simply this we've seen Golovkin on his front foot. We've seen Golovkin fighting his game. Just like we saw Mike Tyson, Felix Trinidad, Roy Jones, Paul Williams, Manny Pacquiao, and Saul Alvarez fighting their games before they ran into Buster Douglas, Antonio Tarver, Carlos Quintana, Juan Manuel Marquez, and Floyd Mayweather. Right? We don't know what happens when Golovkin is actually forced to be on his back foot. We don't know what happens when a guy gets up on Golovkin and actually starts clinching him and wrestling with him. Right? The tape looks great right now. Understand though, this is a typical story in boxing. Guys looking dominant out the gate. There was a time, I know it's stunning to believe now, but there was a time where we all thought David Tua was the future of boxing. Right? And so, Janady Golovkin is a talent. He is one of the best in boxing. But don't kid yourself. You show me an unbeatable fighter in this sport, and I'll show you a guy who, quite frankly, would look bad in certain fights. I don't care who the guy is. And with Golovkin, all I'm saying is, we didn't even see Curtis Stevens clinch him. We saw Golovkin getting hit with power shots. Was Golovkin 
dancing in that fight? Was there a portion of the fight that I missed where Golovkin got up on his toes, danced, operated from distance behind a jab? In fact, what's the fight in which that happened? Right? I know Golovkin had a great amateur career. Pro boxing is different. Right? The fact that Golovkin beat a lot of guys in the amateurs to me, isn't the same <coughs> as beating them over 12 rounds, right? Now, I know many people are talking about Matthew Macklin's quote. Matthew Macklin fought both Sergio Martinez and Gennady Golovkin. And Macklin said that, you know, Golovkin was by far the best fighter <laughs> This is choking me up. <coughs> Macklin said that Golovkin was by far the best fighter he faced. Well, he might be the best fighter against Matthew Macklin's style of fighting. Is that Bernard Hopkins' style? Is that Sergio Martinez's style? Also, let's remember the reason why the Martinez-Macklin fight was complicated for the first two rounds is because Macklin comes out on his back foot, leaning back. It's actually remarkable. It was a nice strategy. When's the last time you saw Gennady Golovkin fight like that? Now, I think Golovkin has the chance to be dominant. He does. I believe he beat some of the middleweight champions out there. But before we anoint him the best ever, why don't we actually see him fight different styles in the ring and actually handle different situations in the ring? If you go back, by the way, and if you look at the tape of the Ali Liston first fight. The color commentator for the telecast was Joe Lewis. Right? Great heavyweight. It's a great night of heavyweight boxing. And on the telecast, <coughs> Joe Lewis actually refers to Liston. And people need to realize just how big Liston was viewed back then, having destroyed Floyd Patterson in the first round twice. You had Joe Lewis refer to Liston as one of the best ever. And keep in mind, Liston had hardly been heavyweight champion. But he had dominated the post-Rocky Marciano era, beating almost every contender. So here you had a great fighter, Joe Lewis, talking about the reigning heavyweight champion as great. Right? And then, of course... The fight starts, and Liston isn't in the area code of Ali when it came to foot speed. Liston's feet were too slow to catch up to Ali. Well, let's take a step back. Didn't Joe Lewis have slow foot speed? Wasn't he getting schooled by Billy Kahn? Right, didn't he lose to Ezard Charles? You know, my, my point is simply... To Joe Lewis, Sonny Liston was an all-time great. Because, of course, that's how Lewis saw the sport. The things Lewis looked for in fighters is what Liston exemplified. But, of course, if you were to ask an Ali, who was the best other than himself, among heavyweights, Ali would be looking at an entirely different set of criteria. Right? Well, my point is this. Golovkin is high volume. He can be countered. Golovkin is front foot heavy. We haven't seen him on his back foot in a low volume fight. We haven't seen him in a high clinch fight. His toughest moments have been in shootouts against guys like Kasim Uma. Right? So, 
as convincing as the data looks right now. Just understand you're seeing only some of the data, right? In a different generation, James Tony fought Roy Jones. Jones was the underdog in the fight. Tony, leading up to that fight, looked dominant. He had beaten guys like Michael Nunn, right? Big names back then, right? I believe Mike McCallum, right? So here he is in against Roy Jones, and just like Liston against Ali, Tony looked slow. People were surprised, right? The boxing hardcore didn't expect the foot speed differential to be as great as it was. We didn't know until we saw it. So my point is, the Gennady Golovkin fights. Is there a fight that's appreciably different than the recent fights we've seen? Did Ashita tie up Golovkin a lot? Did Curtis Stevens? Did Matthew Macklin? If all the fights are running the same script, we won't know what happens if an opponent comes in with a different one. I encourage you to look at the end of the Ross Purity Vladimir Klitschko fight. Vladimir Klitschko's out on his feet. Right up until that point, Klitschko hadn't been forced to actually fight in the later rounds of a fight. He couldn't pace himself. I could easily take Klitschko's name out of the equation and I could plug in David Hayes' name against Carl Thompson. Right? These are guys who looked unbeatable. Right? That's the zone Janady Golovkin is in right now. My point to you is always be a skeptic. All of us are mortal. All of us can be beaten. Let's see Golovkin in against an old master like Hopkins or an in the foxhole warrior like Chavez Jr. Right? We're still collecting data. The jury's still out. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.